Hi guys and welcome back to Scribe Gaming. I'm Scribe and I hope you're having a great day. Now the JKL event has been and gone and it turns out his kit is pretty awesome and it's used in a lot of counters these days that are beneficial to us because they'll help us take down the Galactic Legends, both Kylo and Rey. Now, as soon as I'm done with my Rey farm, which is very soon, I will be cracking on with the JKL farm and I thought I'd show you my thought process on how I go about farming legendary characters. Let's check it out. Alrighty, so when I look at farming for legendary characters, there's a couple of things that I always bear in mind. Now, first and foremost, I go through a four step process. Now, the first step of that is to establish a time frame. Now, CG have gone uh, through a number of variations with their different events on um, established time frames for when an event will first return. Now, most recently, of course, they've introduced the, um, uh, the journey guide. And that has been proven to be beneficial for older players in particular to catch up with more modern rosters because they'll be able to pick and choose the events for the legendary characters or the epic confrontations as and when they choose. Now, it used to be a little bit different. There used to be a rolling rotation for these characters. And it, on, on average, it would take about three months for any character to return, so roughly 90 days. However, in recent times, the first return of particular events like these have been coming a little bit sooner. Now, if you are looking to get Jedi Knight Luke ready for the next time he comes back, I, sh I encourage you to operate on a time scale of roughly 60 to 65 days. This is how soon um, Gas came back after his first event, and it caught a lot of people unawares because everybody was used to the more three-month 90 day turnaround period. I was nearly caught out by it myself, but luckily I had prepared in advance just in case for such an eventuality. Now this time frame will help you establish how you go about your farming. Once you understand that you have X amount of days to get prepped, you should really make sure that you stick to it based on what resources you have available. So next, next step is we take a look at what are the actual requirements for this event. Now there are a number of characters and two ships, well technically three if you look at a capital ship, that you need to farm and you need to get to certain gear thresholds in order to compete in this event. Now they are se I've separated them into this section here by where you will find them. So you've got your cantina section, you've got your stores and you've got your event based characters. Now I'll say first and foremost that if you're looking to get JKL on his first return and you don't have some of these event characters, you know, I'm talking your CLS, your C-3PO, your um, Chewbacca, your Hans Millennium Falcon. If you don't have those characters already, then I think you're going to be really stretching your capabilities at trying to get him on this first go round. And I think you're better off from an efficiency standpoint, looking to delay it until his second return. Now, the other side of it is the cantina farms. Now, there are three cantina farms that you need to go under for Jedi Knight Luke. Um, luckily for us, Cantina Farms are actually the easiest and fastest farms there are in this game, provided you have enough crystal income to feed the energy refreshes that you're going to need. Now, as there are three, you need to basically finish one character per month um, for in order for you to be prepped. Now, as they are all of varying degrees, you can see Lando is an 8 energy node. It's the easiest and fastest farm of the game. Then you've got Wedge Antilles. He's, um, he's a 12 energy farm, so he's not particularly difficult. Um, but, you know, it'll stay, still take a little bit longer. And then there's Han Solo, Captain Han Solo, that is. And he's going to take a little bit longer. Now, he is a 16 energy farm. And what you have to do when you're looking at these is you have to look at what is your crystal income? What can you afford to spend on refreshes? And how much do you actually need to in order to get there? So let's take Lando, for example. I'm going to operate under the assumption that everybody has got zero shards for Lando. I'm sure it's unlikely, but depending on where you are in the game, you might well have zero shards for Lando. Now, we're going to take an assumption here, and that assumption is that the drop rate for all characters is roughly 30 to 33%. In my calculations, I'll be using the lower end of that bracket, 
so as to give us a little bit of a wiggle room. So, if we look at how much energy you naturally gain a day in Cantina, which is 120 energy, yeah, you get one energy every 12 minutes. Um, so, you know, in a 24 hour period, you get 120 energy. Um, we also gain one free bonus energy at the lunchtime refresh of 45. So that gives us natural energy regeneration every single day of 165. So if we divide that by eight sims, for eight energy per sim for Lando, that gives us 20 sims a day. Now, 20 sims a day, you divide that by the assumed drop rate. In our case, we're going with 30%. Sorry, you, you times it by 30%. And you get roughly six shards a day. So if we're assuming that we've got 330 shards, you divide it by six shards a day, that would take 55 days if we used absolutely zero refreshes. Now, obviously, like I said before, we need to put ourselves in a scenario where we are actually gaining one of these characters per month. This is based on an assumption whereby you have none of these characters at all. So really, that's clearly not enough. Now, if we were to add to that 165 energy that we normally get, simply one crystal refresh, 100, 100 crystals will grant us an additional 120 energy. That puts us at 285 energy. You divide that by eight for the number of sims and you times that by 30%. That gives us 10.6, 10 and a half shards a day, we'll say. 10 and a half shards a day. So three, 330 divided by 10.5, that gives us 31 days. Now that's on the cusp of where we need to be, but of course, that's only for Lando. Lando is the lowest um, cantina energy of this entire lot. So really, we're really going to be looking at at least two energy refreshes. So that's a 200 crystal ink uh, expenditure already. Obviously, you are going to have to adapt this to your own personal scenario. If you have one or the other of these characters, then you won't have to spend this much. You, maybe all you need to get is Captain Han Solo. So what I encourage you to do is I encourage you to look at your roster and think, how many shards for these cantina farms do I need? If you've got all of them, fantastic. The next requirement we have to look at is gear levels. Now, all of the characters that are involved in the event itself, so this does not include Wedge Antilles because he is actually in the ship portion only, all these characters have to be Relic 3. Now, that is the minimum threshold. And I have been through and spoken to various people that have done this event and they've said there is no need for you to take any of these characters any further than that. And I would encourage you not to take your characters further than R3 unless they are particularly strong characters. Those characters that I would recommend are most likely going to be Commander Luke Skywalker, uh, Chewbacca, and perhaps Wampa and Darth Vader. Darth Vader in particular these days simply because his rework is now so powerful and can be used in his own standalone GL counters. So those characters feel free to go further. Now, I would do that at your discretion because you'll want to save some of your resources afterwards to gear Jedi Knight Luke. So, I discussed earlier today that if you don't have the event characters CLS, 3PO, Chewbacca, and Hans Millennium Falcon, you should really look to push this event for JKL out until the next time he returns. And that will be somewhere between 120 to 100. 40 or 160 on days, roughly. You can then plot your farms around that. There are also another consideration to take under, under account is Hermit Yoda and Wampa. Now this puts us in an interesting scenario and a little bit of a difficult one because on the one hand, they are quite old characters. However, on the newer side of it, they do use the Guild Event tokens. Guild Event tokens, the original ones, they take 270 per shard. Now if you literally have zero shards of both of these characters, 270 times 330, that's 89,100 shards for each of these characters. If you do not have get, to cur get currency, you're going to be in a really tricky situation. And I'll explain why. Most guilds these days are going to be running the dark side or light side GOTBs, and they give roughly 40 to 50% of the get tokens that you would normally get from Hoth TB. So if you're in an unfortunate position where you haven't gained the shards for these, you're going to be very, very constrained on how much you can actually spend. And in particular, if you haven't already got Malak and General Anakin Skywalker up to seven stars, 
you'll really want to be saving most likely all your get currency for those two characters first. The other side of it is you actually need Rebel Officer Leia Organa. Now, Rebel Officer Leia Organa is a special mission reward unit from the Light Side Hoth. Now, she is available um, through the use of get one currency, uh, get two currency, sorry, the new one that we get from the Geonosis t uh, territory battles. However, investing that currency in her or IPD or any of the other characters that are available through that store outside of the Malevolence and the Negotiator is a bad deal. Do not do it. I've put the cost there just for your information. But I highly, highly discourage you from using that currency. If you, even if you have Malevolence and Negotiator at 7 star, both of them, and you, for some reason you don't have uh, Rebel Officer, Officer Leia Organa, I still don't advise you spend that currency. Simply because there will come a time in the future when CG adds an additional character or an additional ship that requires Get2 currency. And you don't want to have wasted thousands upon thousands of Get2 currency on getting shards for Rolo. Now, if your guild is unwilling to go ahead and use the, the Hoth territory battles as a means of gaining additional uh, Get1 tokens, and as a means of gaining additional shards of Rolo, then I guess what I can suggest to you is perhaps to get in touch with other members of your guild and your officers and see if you can create a splinter guild that can be active for TB. Now, obviously, I imagine officers will discourage this because it will draw away from their main supply. I don't mind, personally, setting up a, a temporary guild that will host people to run through Hoth TBs so that they can gain extra get currency and they can gain shards of Rolo and IPD as the time comes. And there will be absolutely no um, need to stay in the guild outside of the territory battles. You can simply rejoin your old guilds as soon as the week-long event is finished. Another character's character that you get through the store is Wedge's X-Wing. Now, this is required for the, I want to say, fifth stage of the event. Um, I'm not too certain on that. But the fleet stage of the Jedi Knight Luke event requires you to have both Hans Millennium Falcon, any seven-star capital ship, and it doesn't matter which one or how geared it is, and Wedge Antilles. Now, they give you a free Y-Wing uh, tank, the new Rebel tank. They give you a free seven-star one of them for you to use which I thought was actually quite generous because they could have made you farm out for that the hard way through crystal expenditure, but they give you a free one. So if you don't already have it, um, then it's, it's, it's very good for you to be mindful of the fact that you can get it through the Galactic War Store and also the Fleet Store. Now, I will also add that you can also get Wedge Antilles from the Fleet Store, and that should help um, curb your expenditure in Cantina Farming. The final one that you'll have to get is Vader himself. Now, Vader can be got through the fleet store and through various achievements throughout the game. I imagine the majority of players that have been playing for a long time, or at, at least six months, I would say would have a seven-star Darth Vader anyway, and if not, get him, because he is going to be fantastic. He has a fairly rare appearance inside the fleet store, so make sure you check on every refresh, and make sure you save some fleet currency to one side to spend on Vader. Now, the next part I would advise you do, after you've established your farming priorities, where you need to expend your resources, is I would look for using the very useful facilitators that are available online, such as swiggerevents.com and swigger.gg. Swigger.gg in particular can help you track your gear and you can take a look at various other characters that are required so you can collate all that data and find out how much of each specific gear type you need to get. Now, I don't advise you go in there and check every single uh, piece of gear. Just look at the main bottleneck constraints, things like your carbantes, things like your stun guns, and try and look at how much you have in your inventory at the time, and maybe prioritize your farming away from shards, because there are no real normal shards that you need to farm for this, and put that farming into gear instead. It's the way you have to go about it, unfortunately, if you are... Um, focused around simply getting eligible for the Jedi Knight Luke event. Now, you have to be mindful of things such as the guild store, where you can, not the guild event store, the guild store, where you can spend your guild tokens on getting um, 
getting various bits of gear. You can get some really good stuff there. You can get the Mark III Hollows. You can get Carbantes. You can get Stun Guns. You can get um, Bacta Gels. You can get all sorts. It's a fantastic resource. But if you favorite all the characters that you're working on and make sure that you purchase those when they appear in store, you'll be on the right path. Now, the final stage that I have always look at when I'm farming for a new character is identify where my bottleneck is. Okay, now this will be different for different people based on your current rosters. Maybe you have all of the characters at seven star. So your bottleneck then is going to be gearing. Do you follow my drift? If, for example, you have got, you've got all the legendary characters, let's say you've got uh, CLS, you've got 3PO, you've got Chewbacca, you've got Hans Millennium Falcon, they're all R7 because you really like the rebel faction. Um, then you're not concerned about gear or shards or doing any other of the events for that, but you might not have Lando, and you might not have him geared up. Or you might have Lando shards, but you don't have him geared up. And when I say a bottleneck, I don't mean a bottleneck in so much as this is going to stop you from getting where you want to be. I just mean look at where is your biggest constraint. Where is your biggest constraint and pour most of your crystal expenditure and your focus into alleviating that bottleneck. So if we took into account you didn't have, for example, any of the shards for the three cantina farms. If you don't have a lot of crystal income, then it's going to be very difficult for you to get to uh, get all the shards that are required for them to seven stars before Luke returns. OK, or more, more likely, if you don't have any uh, guild event tokens saved up and you don't have any shards of neither Hermit Yoda or Wampa. If you are in that situation, that bottleneck can't be very well eased. So. There is no point in you rushing and spending additional crystals on gearing up the rest of the requirements because you're never going to get there based on what is your biggest bottleneck. What you need to do instead is establish how can you ease that bottleneck. Now, is that a case of you go to another guild that is running Hoth, but only join them during that week to increase your get one income? Is it a case of you stop spending refreshes on Cantina so you can do more in the regular store to build up your supply of gear? Now, luckily for this event, you don't need a lot of uh, relic levels. All the characters, apart from Wedge, Wedge doesn't uh, his his uh, relic levels aren't required. You just need him to pass on additional power to your ship version of him. Um, everybody else has to be R three, and R three is a very very achievable relic level. I know I, I don't mean to downplay how much of an investment relic levels are, but R three is actually very achievable. So I, I doubt anybody has, ha has the issue of they don't have enough signal data, for example, to get all these characters up to uh, Relic 3. It's more likely that you're just going to be suffering with gear. If that is the case, focus exclusively on farming that gear. Alleviate your biggest bottleneck and see if it fits the time frame. If those two time frames line up, uh, gear has uh, most gear has a drop rate of about 20% for those of you that are interested. So if you need to farm, uh, I don't know, a thousand carbantes, then you just look at how many sims you'll need to do in order to hit that and take into account things such as um, ancillary um, income of gear from various things such as challenges, you know, the daily challenges. For example, carbantes, you get roughly about 60 a week uh, for free, but then you'll also have certain benefits from things such as, um, you know, uh, GAC feat rewards and um, uh, winning TW and stuff like that. They give you little things such as stun cuffs and zetas and all this sort of thing. Okay? So that was the last step I would advise you guys do. Identify your bottleneck. See what is your biggest constraint and see how you can minimize it. Does it fit in your time frame? If there is something that you simply cannot improve the speed on, there's something that is physically stopping you from meeting the time frame requirement, then don't push the other elements because you're being inefficient in that sense. If you want to, for example, if you want to invest in the various rebels that are required for this event, then go ahead because it still gives you an immediate benefit. But all I'm saying is don't go out of your way and spend hundreds and hundreds of crystals and thousands of crystals and gearing these up faster when it's not going to qualify you for the event anyway. 
I guess that's about it really guys. So I hope that was somewhat useful to some of you. Now I'm relatively okay on my JKL farm. I think I should be able to get him the second time he comes around. Now I'm going to be focusing exclusively on, on getting Lando Wedge uh, shards because they're the only characters that I'm missing oh, and, and the fleet for, for Wedge. So that's where I'm going to be focusing most of my um, energies. However, then I do have the, the prospect of I do need to gear up things like Wampa and Hermit Yoda and Rolo and Lando and Wedge and Captain Han. So I've got quite a lot of gearing to do. The Rebel side of it, I'm okay. But that's how I'm going to focus my energies. It'll be a little bit on cantina farming and then most of it is going towards gear because that's a lot more relics, you know. Um, so yeah, leave me your comments down below. Tell me how you go about farming and let me know if this is somewhat useful to you guys. Now, I'm quite happy to do video check-ins and show you my progress week on week on how I'm getting ready for Jedi Knight Luke. And we can see if that is useful to other people. Thanks for stopping by, guys. I love you all very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.